Welcome to Transformation with Laota Rasul and Ahad Rasul. In this program, you will activate the changes that need to be made in your life through the processes of cleaning, clearing, and reconnection with your own divinity. It's time to begin the process to heal yourself. Now, here are your hosts, Laota and Ahad Rasul. Good morning and welcome to Transformations with Lauta Rasul. I am Ahad Rasul, and before we get started, I'd like to let everyone know you can download the mobile app for easy listening. That app is Voice America Talk Radio Network. Once again, Voice America Talk Radio Network. Now, the topic of today's show is a new view to the Akashic Records. Now, to introduce the inspiration of the show, Ms. Lauta Russell, good morning. Greetings and salutations and in Lakesh to everyone and to you, Ahad. I'm so happy that you all have joined us here at Voice America. We are very pleased to bring you this show today. Our special guest today is Ellie Stewart, and she will be talking to us about some new revelations in the Akasha. Ellie Stewart has had more than 30 years of experience in healthcare, including 18 years as a director the director of the cardiothoracic surgery, and that she oversaw the medical practice, the residency, the education, and the clinical education and initiatives for all of the facility and the staff at a major teaching hospital in Chicago, in conjunction with various other certifications. Her formal educational credentials include a bachelor's degree in business management, a master's degree in health professional education, and completion of all of the coursework and exams for her doctorate in counseling and adult education. Now, this is the part that we really are interested in. Ellie discovered that she was a clairvoyant in 1972 and has enhanced her abilities as an empath, a clairsentient, and a clairvoyant, a clairaudient, and has studied metaphysical practices for over 35 years. Ellie is a certified advanced practice Akashic Record Practitioner slash teacher and instructor and has completed additional studies and certifications in crystal therapy healing, aromatherapy, sacred geometry, healing touch, and many, many other protocols. In addition to this training in these various um, techniques, she has also been a speaker at the, My at the Body, Mind, Spirit Expo conferences and at healing circles all throughout the Chicagoland area. Ellie is currently running a holistic well wellness center called Pathways to Light in High Park in Chicago. And she is the founder of the Institute for Subtle Energy. And um, her website is www.pathwaystolight.org. And we are so happy to have you here. Welcome, Ellie. Oh, Leota, thank you for all of the accolades. Uh, good morning, Aha. Uh -huh. Good and morning. How are you? Thank you for joining both of you all. Thank you well, for having me. What I didn't share, and I want to share before we ask you your, the first question, is that I want to share with the audience that I have trusted my beloved son, Ahad, into your care, and you trained <laughs> my son in the Akashic field. So uh, this is something that I am endlessly grateful for, and I oh, encourage, thank you. Uh, <laughs> encourage others, too. So thank you so much. and. Um, for our, our audience, so that we can go ahead and begin, I want to ask the question that everybody wants to know, what is the Akasha? Well, you know, the Akasha um, eludes everybody because, uh, you know, for, for very many uh, years, centuries, the Akasha was only accessed by mystics and seers who um, served the kings and the pharaohs and so forth. The Akasha, uh, as we explain it, is primary substance of, of which all things come from. One of the scientists of today's time, Laszlo, calls it the A-field or the total of everything. I look at the Akasha as a dimension of consciousness or a realm in which we can go into, tap into, and access virtually everything, anything that has ever happened. It is all recorded in that space. 
And so uh, that's what the Akasha is. It, it, um, when you work in the Akasha, it elevates all of your other gifts. It is like the foundation of everything. Um, so uh, I hope that, does that help you with understanding it? Right, I think that would be great. I also want to comment, I've read Laszlo's uh, book on the Akasha and several other um, documents and scientific works concerning the holographic uh, nature of our universe and of how the records work as well as several other things even in, in our work. I'd like for you to share a little bit about um, your own um, story and journey into the Akasha. How did you begin? And then um, express to us what your understanding about it is on a personal level. Okay. Well, um, as I, as I, uh, as you mentioned, actually, uh, in 1972, I discovered that I was actually a queer audience. And um, my early experiences with the Akasha was um, pretty much happenstance. I would tap into it, not really understanding where I was going. Um, some of the uh, other um, mystics that I associated with would tell me all the time, oh, you have such a special discernment. And I would be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but I would go into this space, which I didn't have a name for, and I would bring back this, these profound um, meanings of life for them. And so uh, that kept happening um, throughout my entire uh, adult, you know, my entire adult life until um, the night before my stepmother made her transition, uh, she came to me in my dream state, and she is the one that actually formally took me into this space, uh, me still not understanding where I was at. And she was telling me uh, right before she uh, left how rich I was going to be. And I thought she was talking about, oh, I'm going to open up a restaurant and <laughs> I'm going to have all this wealth. But I could tell in her tone that that was not what she was referring to. And she was saying how rich I was going to be. And I finally agreed. I said, oh, okay. I finally agreed that this was what I was going to be abundantly rich at, um, not even really knowing what I had agreed to at that point. And it's kind of funny because everything after that, you know, um, kind of like just popped up, like more information started coming to me about Edgar Casey. And I, you know, I was like, oh, he used to sleep his, his life away. But I started reading about some of the profound um um, healing that he would bring back when he went into his uh, uh, sleep state. And I thought to myself at one point, gee, I want to do that. And then um, I think what popped up on my computer screen one day was something about the Akashic Records. And I clicked on it, and um, I ordered a book. Um, and so I started reading, you know, uh, Ortiz. I started reading Bar Barnett, uh, Laszlo, and, and Linda Howe's work. And um, then at one point they told me um, I could hear, you're going to get your own prayer. You're going to get your own prayer. So I thought I was supposed to start studying, you know, with one of these people, which I did. Um but that was not what they were saying. Um, I eventually did get my own method to access the Akasha in, um, uh, in this realm of consciousness. And when I first went in, um, I discovered the vastness. It was just like, you know how you walk into a, um, like a airplane hangar. That's, um, 
that's how vast it was. Think of an airplane hangar a hundred times the size or more, never ending. And when I opened up the space, uh, that's how large it was. And imagine rows and rows of file cabinets going down the space but never ending. And I asked, what am I supposed to do here? And I was told, anything you want. Anything you want. It's all at your fingertips. And I was like, wow, this is profound. Um, you know, I have been studying other people's work uh, for um, many, many years. However, now I had my own access point. And so I started to work in that uh conscious dimension and that level or that realm and I could feel that um, it was somewhat elevated from where I was at originally. Uh, so Ellie, may I ask, uh, I'd like to ask you, you're sharing your experience, I'd like to ask you, is this something everyone can do? Is this something that um, every person, some people you said you spontaneously were doing it and, yeah. and you have many gifts, but those who are not aware of any gifts who would like to experience the holographic nature and vastness of of uh, substance, of original substance, is this something that, you know, you've taught my son and I sent him to you um, for the purpose of this expansion, but would you talk for a moment about whether everyone can do this? I, yes. Yeah. I definitely feel that um, any and everyone that is willing to step up and agree to enter into the record can access the record. Remember I told you, I told my stepmother, oh, okay, that was my agreement at that point. <laughs> uh -oh. I later found out. <laughs> but um, that was my agreement to take on this work. And so, yes, I, I really feel that anybody who has the willingness, and, and here's, the, here's the key, you have to be willing to serve, whether it is serving yourself and moving forward in your evolutionary process so that you can um, impact the lives of others, or if you want to serve and helping others realize their, um, where their journey or where their path is really taking them and how they can segue themselves back on the right track. Uh, if you are, if you understand that um, this is the place where you can go, where they love you unconditionally, then, then the information is open to you. Um, we all are born with the ability uh, of intuition. And so what the Akasha does is it takes your already given talent and it enhances it to the fullest capability. I hope that, does that answer your question? Absolutely. And uh, I think this understanding will be um, when people realize that this is something that they can access, that it's part of their birthright, it's part of the gifts that humanity have been given, and that it has uh, escaped us in our modern times, that there are cultures that are, are familiar with this and where it's more commonplace. So I, the, the thing that I'd like to ask next is concerning the variety of things that um, you teach and that can be done in the records. Yes, um, I approach the records from a different standpoint. Um, I do teach people how to access the records to bring forth information for other individuals uh, that are in need of and I certify them in that. But more importantly, uh, we have a lot of people who um, they just don't understand what happens during death. And, you know, especially when there's been a traumatic death, people in the human form are looking for closure. I 
teach my students how to access that energy uh, that has transitioned over into the, into the next realm. I teach them how to really make solid contact with the Akasha and bring forth information that would help the ones that are left here to move forward in their lives and not look at death as such an ending to something. Miss um, Ellie, Miss yeah. Ellie, it looks yeah. like we're coming up on our commercial break. So okay. when we get when we come back out of it, we can get back into more. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed so far, and we'll be back in a few minutes. If you are hearing this. More than likely, you were guided to this program by divine design. This is a trigger point for you to evolve into who you are originally meant to be, divine. You know intimately the feeling that something is missing, and you're right. We have been altered and disconnected from our supreme source, the divine. Presently, most humans have two active strands of DNA. Science verifies that there are 10 additional strands that are not connected. They call this junk DNA. This is where it gets interesting. We are barely using 20% of our brains because these 10 strands that they call junk are not connected. There is a purpose to everything that is created, including the so-called junk DNA. It would not be there if there were no purpose for it. DNA activation is a call to restoring ourselves to the original blueprint and original innocence. DNA activation helps connect back the additional 10 strands of DNA. This reconnection is possible through the etheric body, sometimes referred to as the light body, where off-world galactic genetic engineers oversee our reconnection at dnareplicate.com. And we're back. Ellie, are you still with us? Yes, I'm right here. Excellent. Yes, Ellie, um, one, of the, one of our goals of this show, Transformations, and one of our missions for our, um, our business at DNA Replicate is to help transition people who are not accustomed to having a spiritual uh, healing technique or not accustomed to having being in tune with their spirituality at all. We want to help transition those kind of people, the children, the young ones who don't, who aren't being taught or aware of these type of things into doing this where they don't stand, where they're not uncomfortable because they're in tune with their spirituality or they're not, mm -hmm. uh, they're not a standoff because of that. And one big, one thing I remember sitting in your class uh, learning, you gave the example that the Akashic records are like going into a library and yeah. you can find anything you're looking for. You check, you know, you go in, you get that information, you look for it, and it's just a matter of fact. It's not like, you know, it's not something very extremely spooky as it might come off to your everyday person. I think right. that's extremely, you know, important because we we really want to bridge this gap and we really want our spirit, our um, all these things that we're speaking about on the show to really hit home for people who's, who don't know anything about it. And it'd be something that, people feel comfortable doing. So can you speak a little on how this is this can be a regular part of your life and it does not mean that you have to have some special talent or gift to be a part of it or you have to have some special calling? Oh, sure. Um, how I usually, what I usually do with each class now, everyone has homework. Part of your homework and part of allowing yourself to get comfortable is that I ask, for 30 days that you go into the record for meditation for uh, 15 to 30 minutes for those who have not had any type of experience whatsoever. I ask them to start off with 15 minutes because, because this is primary substance, the energy is quite strong. The energy is, is um, intense. And so um, some of the experiences that people have is that they will go into this dimension of consciousness and 
uh, they would get very tired and sometimes feel like in like a warm cocoon and they will just drift off or the energy will be so intense that they can only uh, stand it for um, five minutes. You have to build your muscle, I tell all the students, you have to build your muscle and that muscle comes in through the eighth chakra. The eighth and seventh chakra are your, your focal point in this work. And so because we don't really, um, you know, we work with the other chakras, the, the root chakra going up. Um, because we work with those chakras more often uh, with energy, when it comes to the crown chakra or when it comes to the eighth chakra, um, most people don't refer to that. And so you have to build your strength up to be able to withstand energy. That's why the work that uh, you do at DNA Replicate is so important because through the clearing and the cleaning and the, and the connection, the reconnection, um, people are, are more, uh, they're, they're more able to hold that frequency for a longer period of time. So I've seen the people that come in through uh, DNA Replicate uh, after they've been through the protocol, uh, they're, they're able to hold the frequency a much, for a much longer period of time. They can hold it for 30 minutes, but even after you've held it for 30 minutes, it's very important that you hydrate yourself because it is a vibrational depository. You're dealing with straight vibration frequency. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I teach the class a very different way uh, now because um, every time we come out, we hydrate. And before we go in, dehydrate again. It's important for that water uh, to in the system. I also even uh, I ask them to put um, with a couple of bottles of the water, put a little pinch of salt in there, just so that they can uh, really retrieve the information uh, much more easily, especially when they are actually channeling and getting information from a loved one that's in the soul group. Uh, they tend to speak through the person, and so it requires uh, a much a much more volume. Uh, it, it requires for you to hold the frequency, uh, uh, be able to hold it that much longer, because the information is it's kind of like it's coming through your vo your vocal cords at that point. So I hope that answers your question. Does that um, cover it? Yes, ma'am. Of course it does, and. Uh, I'm just, I'm so excited about this, the Akashic Record class, which of course I've been aware of. However, the overall Institute of Subtle Energy, and because it's a personal passion of mine that we be able to extend the blessing of this type of work and this type of personal um, healing and taking our lives into our own hands to so, to more people than a select few. And, you know, yeah. being young, as young as I am, and a lot of the people that I, you know, befriended over you know, the few years that I've been here and uh, the people that I associated with, came up with, it, it it's tough to even have a general uh, friendship with a lot of people because... A lot of a lot of times, I'm involved in so many things that I can't interact with someone about because they're just not aware of. And right, right. In society today, we don't have much value to the spiritual side of things, the energetic side of things. So I'm so excited for this Institute of Subtle Energy and all the other things that you have that you're teaching, as well as the Akashic Records. Is there some some other? Uh, special things that you have going on with the Akashic Records or maybe newer things that you have going on with the Akashic Records that since the, since the time when I was in your institute that, uh, that I didn't experience? Yes, now I teach the, I teach the class. I'm not teaching uh, anyone, anybody else's work. I'm teaching my own access. And um, when you go in that, I'm teaching it from a whole different uh, viewpoint. We work really, really heavily on um, understanding resistance and being in resistance. And, um, you know, that is a path that is a slippery slope for 
most people because usually when things are going on in your life, you don't really understand when you're in resistance. I experienced that um, myself, and it was my understanding of, okay, I'm in resistance, what do I do about it, uh, that really led me to the ability to have my own method to enter into the records to be, you know, graced with that. Um, and working with the Council of Twelve and the Lords of Akasha. And um, actually, my focal point is um, teaching individuals to really uh, develop their intuitive ability through uh, channeling and retrieving information and healing. Um, this is first class that um, you really get the experience of channeling information from those that have passed over, um, and they're bringing, they're part of our soul group anyway. So this is like the direct connect. Um, and we had uh, a phenomenal class here last week. I'm sorry you weren't here, but I'm really hoping you'll be able to uh, come back up and get the updated information, uh -huh, because I think you would really love it. I plan to. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, will you um, um, give us more illumination on the Council of Twelve and the Lords of the Akasha? Because you've mentioned that, so you may want to give us a little illumination on that. Okay, so um, the Lords of the Akasha are the beings that uh, collect the information and make sure that the integrity is held with the information and no one is, you know, trying to manipulate anything that's recorded. Um, they govern the earth plane. The Council of Twelve, um, because anyone that has been in um, any of my blood moons or um, I've had a couple of other events uh, that has brought forth um, uh, contact from the universe, not just our Earth plane. And the Council of Twelve is my interface uh, in accessing that information. They are also uh, the ones who have escorted me into uh, the other realm in the Akasha uh, so that we can have access to more information other than what is going on in the Earth plane. And so that has been really exciting. I tell people one of the books that they must read, it is a must read for this class, is uh, Strangers Among Us. And um, then I have a whole slew of books that I want them to become familiar with if they are really serious about studying this work because it is a study, it is a practice. Um, and um, I cannot begin to tell you uh, how, how much this work has helped other people um, because, you know, Sometimes we're just wandering around uh, aimlessly, uh, not really trusting ourselves, not being able to trust others. But this is a, this is a space uh, that one can go to to get the real information. As a matter of fact, um, even in the method that I teach to access this realm, um, we are focused on the truth. And so um, it was uh, it was nice to have in this last class last week. I had several of my old students that came back for the updated information, and I had new students who had started on their spiritual journey. Some of them had done like the blood moon events with me. Uh, some of them had no idea at all about anything. And this was their first time coming forth. And I'm, I have to tell you, everybody left that class uh, feeling as if uh, they had finally found something that could help them indefinitely. Wow. Does that, does that help? <laughs> <laughs> does it? <laughs> Well, you know, you led right into what I wanted to talk about next. I'm actually looking at um, the continuing education for the spring of 2016 that's put out by McHenry County College, the Workforce <laughs> and Community Development. And I want to read this brilliant um, 
the, the, about the class that you teach. This is a brilliant write-up about the class that you teach, and it's called Akashic Record Certification. In this three-day immersion of the Akashic Record, you will learn what the Akashic Records are, why it is so beneficial to know, and how to access this goal mine of soul level guidance, I love that. How to access your own Akashic records, how to open your records for others, and how to also open the records of your pets, your home, your business, your plants, and much, much more. You'll gain confidence and understanding about the sacred resource as an ultimate tool of self-empowerment, and of course I would add transformation. Mm -hmm. and, and you will discover how easy this once taboo energy is now available to everyone. You'll experience the uplift of knowing that you can use this resource in an unlimited ways to improve every aspect of your life and support those around you in connecting with the same energies. That's brilliant. And these are classes that are coming up along with uh, clearing ancestral patterns in past lives, along with healing in the Akasha, I see you also are teaching classes on energetic aromatherapy at the college, as well as classes on introduction to essential oils, uh, energy medicine level one and level two. But I wanted specifically to talk about the, um, the description of the class because this allows people to know that if they have loved ones that are pets, they can look and see how they have interacted. And I don't know if you have a, uh, a quick story you can share with us, but I do know that you do work with people and you and I worked with a client actually together that had a pet that they had had other lifetimes with. And I thought that would be an interesting uh, thing for you to share if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Which person is that? Because I... This is the person who had the uh, elephant picture at their front door and they had a pet with them. You may not remember it, but... I don't. I, I have to... Well, I it actually is all right. We, huh? we're, it's about time for us to get back into the break, uh, not the next break again, unfortunately. Oh. I'm flying by. However, you know, we, we value this Akashic Record experience so much that I'm sure, and you know this, but for the listening audience, we've made it in our business a mandatory part of someone's journey to transformation. So they have to, or they not have to, but if they choose to work with us, a part of a step in the process, the first step is for them to have an Akashic Record reading. And we do that because it's a very great transitional um, opportunity to go from your everyday life and to start working with your spirituality and working with your energy and things. So this, this show has me having goosebumps over here because I personally experienced from doing the readings the the transition that it helps people make and the effect that just uh, Akashic Record reading has with breaking down all the built up experiences in their life that have negative imprints and energies. So on the other side of the break, we'll be right back and we're back. Ellie, you're still there? Yes, I'm right here. Okay, I wanted to uh, mention this idea of transformation and uh, how in, at, uh, in the work that we do at DNA Replicate to clean, clear, and reconnect people, our highest recommendation is when they finish their process of clearing that they learn to become Akashic Record readers. And of course, we have an a alliance with you because of the um, level of work that you're doing and the wonderful success you have in helping people transform. So one of the things in, that I, I'd like to share about it before you um, continue is that we find that the level of power that a person can achieve, personal power after they've been cleaned, cleared, and connected is squared when they learn to open their records, when they have the opportunity to wake up in the morning and when they have a question about why their father treated them the way they did or why their wives are the way they are, that the uh, information that comes through the Akasha allows them a level of love and compassion that they would not normally be able to access. It's such an immediate experience based on just one of the things that was, um, I think Ahad may have said, that it's non-emotional and it's only the truth. 
It's very factual information. This is not the same as a psychic reading or anything like that. And wanted to share that, see if you have a comment on it. Well, um, yes, yeah, you know, it is not the same. You know, psychic reading, um, while they may get the information, uh, they don't necessarily get the detail. They are given only a, a, a they are on the peripheral, more or less. And when you come into the Akasha, you really get the meat, you get the detail, you get the background, uh, you see where you come from, uh, how many times you repeated the pattern. I mean, you just get more information than what you get from just, um, you know, a regular psychic reading. Psychic readings are phenomenal because they at least give you an idea as to, okay, I better look at this a little bit more closely. How do I get the depth that I need so that I can get out of this rut and move forward? And so, you know, we need the psychic reading. You know, we need the people who can point us in a direction and say, look, you better go and really get into what this is all about. Um, so, um, you know, this is where you come to really study and set up a practice. You know, you want to have a spiritual connection. This is this is where you this is where you do that work, and um, that's why this work is different. Uh, this is where you go where where you go for all of your answers. Uh, this uh, cuts out more or less the middleman. I, I've had I've had people who have um, been in therapy for years. I have one girl who had been in therapy for 25 years, and I took her into the records, and she made more ground. She covered more ground. I'm not saying that the therapy didn't help her. It helped her to a point, but this is where she could take back her power. She could become empowered herself to find out what the truth is about why she's going through various avenues. I work a lot with uh, uh, counselors, uh, psychologists, spiritual counselors. I work a lot with them because they are now realizing that they can only take the client to a certain point. You know, some of the things that they don't do past life regression, uh, some of the things they just can't get at. And mm -hmm. so they need to really uh, come to someone like me to help that person dig into the material themselves. I'm not here to do your heavy lifting for you. I am here to guide you to do your own heavy lifting and to clear your plate. Well, that brings us right up to our next um, topic, which is, I know you have a story of transformation that uh, you will be sharing with us. Would you like to do that now? Yes, I would love to share my own story of transformation. Um, and, and this is because I want people to know how dedicated I am to the work that not only I do, but the work that you do. Um, I was going through my own personal uh, experience, and it was very, uh, it, it was very frightening. I had never been in a situation like this before. I considered myself to be a very strong individual, and um, this was something that I would rather not have been involved in. But there I was. And so, of course, I went into the Akashic Records. I was doing work in the Akashic Records. Um, and I asked, what is my outcome? And I didn't like the answer. It wasn't a favorable answer. And so I asked, what can I do to shift it? And at that time, they told me I needed to be out of resistance. And I'm thinking, I'm scratching my head, resistance. How am I in resistance? Well, uh, be that as it may, I asked for a guidance on that situation. And it was almost like the very next day, the guidance came in the form of a call 
from an associate, a friend, um, that uh, told me that he was not allowed to sleep. He was tossing and turning in his sleep and that I had to call you, Leota. And I said, well, I don't know this woman. Why do I have to call her? You have to call her. She has to answer. And I was like, well, okay. So I took it as a sign. I don't, you know, I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm in this realm working. I call it living in the invisible. And um, I have to pay attention to all things unseen. <laughs> so <laughs> off to the phone I went calling Leota. And you talked to me about your protocol. And it was something within the very nature of my being that knew that you spoke the truth. As you were as you were talking, I could see my life changing. And so um, I signed up for it. As you can say, I, I, you know, you can say that I'm very, very much obedient. I was uh, really going in for the DNA, the anger, fear, removal, the soul retrieval, this, that, and the other. And um, we get to the point, and you're telling me, um, well, Ellie, you have to do Ho'oponopono. And uh, you have to do it for a minimum of two, two to two and a half hours a day. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I go to do the Ho'oponopono. So I was waking up at six, from six to eight, I would do the Ho'oponopono. But as I began to really get into the rhythm of Ho'oponopono, my master's teachers and loved ones told me to come into my Akashic records and do the Ho'oponopono. And I'm thinking, well, Leota didn't tell me to do that. <laughs> but into the records I went. And I would do the Ho'oponopono every day uh, in the records. Um, I was really, my classes was really developing out in Naperville. So I had a 45-minute drive to Naperville and back home. So I was doing Ho'oponopono, what almost equated to uh, four and a half to five hours a day. And so on the drive out to uh, Naperville, uh, one day I was doing the Ho'oponopono. I had just closed my records, got in the car, was driving to Naperville, doing the Ho'oponopono, and something felt different. And I heard, it is done. You are clear. I was like, what? It is done. You are clear. You are free. And so I got off the expressway, and I pulled over to the dual parking lot, and I sat there. I said, I don't understand. You are free. It is done. You are free. And they started to play like a movie for me, um, a time period in which um, I had caused great harm to an individual, and his daughter was looking on. And the people that were that were in this scenario were the same people that I was in this current situation in this lifetime. Um, and I was like, oh, my God. And I began to cry. I began to weep. And so I called you, Leona. I don't know if you remember. I called you. And you, I said, Leona, they're telling me I'm free that this situation has been handled and you looked at the situation and I think you didn't even <laughs> at first I don't think you even believed it. You probably thought, oh Ellie Dolph a rocker <laughs> 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 But um you confirmed that what I had heard was true. And I I can tell you at that point I experienced a shift. I ex Experience the shift of understanding what it meant to not be encumbered with fear. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't know if other people have ever felt that before. To have the knowing that you are not encumbered with fear or abandonment or all of the other things, all of the other wounds that we go through in this lifetime. And it was the most uplifting and inspiring 
moment in my life, and it was a moment that kept repeating. It was a moment that has not stopped. <laughs> and, you know, I wake up in the morning, and I just, it, oh, what's the grossness of it all? Excuse me, I get a little full when I talk about it because it was the transformation that keeps on going, and it hasn't stopped, all because I went into the record. I have to tell you, you know, um, I didn't go into the record uh, just because my stepmother took me in there. I went into the record through I was in resistance going into the record. I mean, mm. it was like I found I found certain information, and it was six months before I acted on. It. So even even that journey was plagued with my own resistance, me getting in the way. And when I experienced being set free, it opened up everything for me. It opened up. My work changed. My communication in the Akasha changed. The depth in which I gather information changed. Everything changed. All for the better. So, um, that is, uh, that is my transformation story. I hope I haven't gone over time. <laughs> no, no, everything is perfectly timed and as so it was in your life and the events that followed that you um, have given such a beautiful and uh, authentic testimony to and we are very appreciative that you have come uh, to be on the show to discuss the transformational tool of the Akashic Records and the transformational tool of the things that have helped you and that you are now leading others into and of course uh, we encourage everyone after you've been cleaned, cleared, and reconnected, we encourage you to step into the power of being able to access your own answers without a third party. And then, if you're interested, if you want to use it to assist others, um, you will automatically assist yourself and your family and your soul group. But if you want to use it to assist others, you then can. Yes, ma'am. Well, we are thankful, thankful, thankful to have it. Our- having everyone's ear for the last hour. And before we go, I'd like to let everyone know you can visit our website at www.dnareplicate.com to find out more information on the uh, services that we offer. And you can email us with any questions, comments, and anything you have to say to us at laotaofthesun at gmail.com or myself, ahadofthesun at gmail.com. And Ellie, if you'll share with us your website and contact information. Yes, my my phone number is 773-216-9882. And the website is www.pathways to life. That's pathways with an S, P-A-T-H-W-A-Y-S-T-O. L-I-G-H-T dot org, O-R-G, where you can reach me at info, I-N, F as in Frank O, period, Pathways to Light, that's P-A-T-H-W-A-Y-S, T-O-L-I-G-H-T, at gmail dot com. Thank you. Everyone have a great day. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you for tuning in to Transformation. Please join Laota Rasul and Ahad Rasul for another edition of the program next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Have a positive, life-changing week.